Good day, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with you virtually. My name is Mary Ellen Randall, and I'm an IEEE volunteer. I'm actually sitting in for Grayson Randall, who was planning to make this presentation, but who was deployed with the move truck at this time. So um, we will talk about the lessons that we've learned in over five years operating the move truck. MOVE is a volunteer-created IEEE program which permits us to put into practice our tagline, Advancing Technology for the Benefit of Humanity. We work with community partners to provide relief services after a natural disaster has struck. Those services include communications and power. For example, the technologies that we as members help to develop but are missing when a natural disaster strikes. Piloted in the US, MOVE is expanding to other disaster prone areas in the world. The objectives of the MOVE program are to provide vital services to emergency responders and to the public when they have been compromised by a disaster. The initial program piloted in the US. In that program, we deploy as a partner of the American Red Cross, a national partner, and we collaborate them in their disaster services technology team in providing services using both our truck and their technology assets. Our truck has independent off-grid power and internet um, provided via satellite so that we can operate anywhere that the um, infrastructure is severely impacted. We can set up the power, IP phones, internet access within about 10 minutes of arrival, and it's used again by the Red Cross, and also whenever we can, we provide it to the public so that they can reach out and connect with their loved ones. When we're not deployed, we typically provide STEM events, science, technology, engineering, and math to schools, to the public, at science festivals, etc. And that is a popular activity when we're not battling COVID. This is a picture of the truck deployed. On the left, you will notice a vehicle labeled FEMA. This stands for the Federal Emergency Management Agency of the United States government. In a large-scale disaster, FEMA manages the resources used to respond. Next to that is the American Red Cross, who has a humanitarian mission to alleviate human suffering. Since our mission is disaster relief, we have partnered with the American Red Cross. The Red Cross provides food and shelter to IEEE volunteers when we are deployed to a disaster. We work on our move truck, systems and we also trained in Red Cross systems and technology services and we assist with all of the Red Cross operations when we are deployed. This is what the inside of the move truck looks like. We are self-contained with power on board, a satellite dish, so even when the cellular towers are out and the power is not available, we can still communicate, access the internet, use internet proto call phones, cross the satellite, utilize radios, and so on. This is how we assist relief workers. We also provide internet to survivors of the disaster so they can reach their families and ask for help. After receiving the truck in March of 2016, um, there have been steady disaster relief deployments um, with a total of 24 actual responses to date. This is a map of um, the United States and the different states that we have covered with the initial move truck. Uh, that truck is a white truck, which you've seen probably in some of the pictures of move. Um, in the states that are colored green, we have deployed either in STEM events or in disasters. And you can see we have a pretty broad reach. Um, since we also consider our MOVE volunteers key to the program, 
some of our MOVE volunteers without the truck deployed to Puerto Rico when that island was devastated by Hurricane Maria a few years ago. Since then, we have developed some uh, great volunteers in Puerto Rico who are ready to respond should disaster strike there again. On the left-hand side, you'll see a truck. That truck, which is uh, black paint, is a new truck that was donated by Cisco Systems. We're extremely grateful for their contribution to the MOVE program. And our goal is to take that truck and deploy it in the western half of the country, which is why I show it on the map that way, so that we can cover more of the United States and respond to more disasters. As I record this, um, on October 6th, uh, both MOVE trucks are deployed to Louisiana. In Louisiana, it was recently hit by two hurricanes, Hurricane Ida, and which was very devastating. And then that was followed, the same area was hit again by Hurricane Nicholas just a couple weeks later. There are many, many people who are still um, in towns with no power, no communications, um, their homes are destroyed. Some of the towns, it's estimated that 80% are damaged or destroyed. And as you can see from the pictures, it's very extensive. The top picture shows your building that is um, no longer viable. And in the bottom picture, which is through the raindrops, you can see um, a whole line of buildings that are destroyed right there. We have many, many examples of this that have been reported by our MOVE deployment teams that are there. This picture on the left gives you a bit of an idea of how far the MOVE truck goes and the types of terrain that it covers. I often think of uh, New Orleans as being in the southern U.S., but if you look at this picture, you'll see that the truck has gone way down to these barrier islands that are below that. And on those islands, that's where everything is um, very severely damaged. As you can see in the upper right, those buildings are pretty much demolished. On the lower right, those are pictures of um, boats that have been moved right off the water onto the shore as a result of the storm. And we're working um, much of the area that covers the route um, between New Orleans and Grand Isle, and there is a lot of devastation there. We're privileged to help um, hundreds and of, of uh, families every day and thousands of families over the course of our deployment. This is a scene from one of the worst hurricanes we responded to, Hurricane Michael. Michael was a Category 5 storm with winds exceeding 150 miles per hour at landfall or 252 kilometers per hour. Many times the damage we see after a storm is caused by flooding or storm surge from the sea, but Michael had horrible winds that flattened whole towns. So after five years of deployments, um, here are some lessons that we've learned. All disasters are different. Every time you respond, you will use different facilities and different skills. There's other problems to be solved that are not anticipated. So the engineering problem solving mindset is great to use in a disaster, but flexibility is key. Things don't go as planned and you have to respond continually. Also, we train as volunteers on an ongoing basis. It's really important to our success that we keep up on the systems in the truck, on the latest safety techniques, on what is happening um, with weather, all sorts of things we continually train and that is important to our success and to our safety. Uh, partners are essential. I mentioned the American Red Cross. We have also deployed with other partners. When we are there, it's very hard to get food and shelter unless you are deployed with a partner. And they, we all assist each other when we're there. It's a, a big community of people who are there for a common purpose. Um, COVID precautions are necessary. In order to respond during the COVID times, we've had to put in additional 
precautions and additional procedures, and we can't let that down uh, now. So um, it, it, our volunteers are wearing masks, they have cleaning supplies, um, they're um, keeping their interaction uh, reduced, keeping it distant. Um, luckily, we are outside a lot on some of these things, but all those things are important to keeping us safe. You, um, our volunteers pre-pack, especially those who go often. Um, they have a go bag and they're ready to leave immediately. We've been called out um, and requested to leave ASAP. It can be an hour. Uh, it usually takes us an hour to get the truck ready um, or two hours to get out the door, but it can be a very quick lead time to deploying. And you should prepare ahead for poor conditions. What we learned from Hurricane Michaels, we had to have a lot of water on board and we had to have meals ready to eat um, on board, MREs as they're called affectionately. Things of that nature are important to keep on the truck and we keep it supplied should we run into a situation where we can't get um, uh, food right away. And as you would guess, a lot of these places, there are no restaurants open or anything like that. There may not even be hotels, so we keep cots in the in the trucks and we also have um, bunks in one of the trucks there are many different skill sets that are needed for a program like this some people deploy with the truck but many many are behind the scenes helping to um, figure out the safest way for them to travel uh, watching the weather uh, keeping the truck maintained uh, training others uh, fundraising etc so many skills are needed for this type of program. Here are a few examples of our STEM and public visibility events that we hold when it, we are not in hurricane season. And in a pre-COVID year, we typically would reach over 50,000 people with these events. I'm very excited to let you know that we are expanding internationally in November of last year, the Board of Directors approved new initiatives funding that we will use to target at least two different, two additional areas, that of India and the Caribbean. We did analysis to figure where there were uh, other disaster prone areas where we had enthusiastic volunteers um, and we're evaluating the partner potential. We will customize the solutions to each of these areas, so uh, for Puerto Rico, likely won't be a truck, but we're doing modular units, for example, that we will be distributing and putting in um, strategic locations. All the members there will be trained on them and ready to deploy them at a moment's notice. Each move installation is customized to the environment that it, it, it will operate in. So for instance, the trucks that are used in the US will be different from any vehicles in India and in areas like the Caribbean or in small islands, we then uh, will customize these modular kind of units to the needs of that environment. When we join as an international committee for MOVE, we will share our skills, our tools, our experience, and processes so that we are one step closer to advancing technology for humanity. Maya Angelou is a author and poet, and she reminds us that people will forget what we said or did, but they'll never forget how we made them feel. And in the MOVE program, when you help people at their lowest, you are really helping them to feel that they can recover and restart and get back to some semblance of normalcy in the future. Thank you for your kind attention. For more information, you can go to move.ieee.org or move.ieeusa.org or feel free to email me, merandall at ieee.org. Thank you.